Good afternoon, everyone, or evening. I do not know when I'm going to actually get this video up online. But I uh, wanted to address something that's going on uh, this week. I Actually, I believe uh, in two days, there's going to be a lot of people in Virginia who are going to be meeting at a rally um, concerning the laws that are being passed in the Commonwealth of Virginia concerning weaponry. Um, and what I'm going to be addressing in this video are some uh, falsehoods. Um, misconceptions concerning the framers of this country and the writers are one of the writers of the Constitution, that being James Madison, uh, who actually helped to formulate the Second Amendment. Um, and as I've stated before, I do not uh, hold in high regard at all the Constitution. It's just a piece of paper. Um, fancy piece of paper uh, that people cleave to. Um, out of some emotional tie are just because they've been brainwashed to do so by the public education system. Um, the Bill of Rights, those rights uh, that are contained on the Bill of Rights, those are, uh, uh, people believe, granted to us by government. Those rights are not granted to us by government, and government cannot protect those rights, defend those rights, or give you those rights. Those rights already existed. They're for you to defend. They're for you to claim. No one can give them to you. No one can protect them for you. It's your personal responsibility to do so. Uh, government, if we leave them as the arbitrator and the defender of things, they're going to take those things away because that's how they work. That's how all governments have worked in the past. Um, that's why we need to end this blight on society, this hemorrhoid on the earth known as government, um, and just uh, practice self-government and personal responsibility, and quit trying to tell other people how to live, um, what they can own, what they can't own, and that they have to give their money to, to the government or your community so you can build a school for Timmy and Johnny, and so they can have a really nice school gymnasium to go to and yeah, anyway um so anyway there's this gun rights rally going on and i hear a lot of things i watch uh, people on youtube um one of my favorite shows on youtube is in time flicks uh brian runs that over there and, I, and i've heard him say a lot of things too about james madison that uh, while i i love brian's show and and uh thank brian probably a great guy have never met him in person uh but he's actually uh talking about james madison like he would be um against what the uh, virginia legislature is trying to do he wouldn't be against it at all um so and what i'm just trying to do i'm not trying to really criticize a person but i'm just pointing out that we need to really study people um we need to really research what uh, you know, the framers believed what they thought and their actions before we start speaking for them and say that James Madison would be, you know, um, flipping off the Virginia legislature, that he would be, you know, flipping them the bird and that he's rolling over in his grave. He would be going right along with them uh, because he did the same thing back when uh, he was a a senator um our state legislature and when he was the president so we just need to what i'm saying is quit using these framers because even jefferson while i agree with some of the quotes that jefferson uh you know made are you know, some of his sayings um are, are really good when he got into office he used things that before he got into office, he used powers that he said the government should not have. But then when he got in office, he turned around and used those powers. So, you know, uh, power corrupts. And these people that we put on a pedestal, um, they're not the people that we've been led to believe they are at all. Anyway, in 1785, Madison twice submitted a bill to the Virginia 
General Assembly entitled A Bill for the Preservation of Deer. Uh, both times the House failed to act. Um, it goes on um, to say that not surprisingly, Madison wanted to financially penalize people who hunted out of season. But what is surprising is that Madison revealed his understanding of how gun usage should be distingu distinguished between personal use and common defense. Madison's position is highlighted in the bill's language. The law would penalize people who shall bear a gun out of his enclosed ground unless while performing military duty. And it's in the law that he proposed. So, in Madison's mind, uh, there was a difference between bearing a gun for personal use and bearing arms for defense, and the state had the right to regulate the personal use of guns. So when you're saying that, oh, Madison would, you know, these people who say you can't show up at the state legislature bearing a weapon this weekend, uh, Madison would flip them off. No, he wouldn't, man. People. These, P, these men that you hold up on this pedestal, these framers, were just men just like you. Actually, they were probably worse. They had power, and the power corrupted them, and they wanted to control others. Okay, so... Madison believed Virginia had the right to control guns used for hunting and personal reasons. Madison's stance on gun control is further highlighted during his presidency. Uh, the Rittenhouse affair. affair. In 1778, during the American Revolution, a British ship called the Active carried American prisoners, including Gideon Olmsted. Olmsted organized the prisoners and took control of the ship and started to sail to an American port when they were overtaken by an American privateer. Both Gideon and the privateer both claimed the ship's contents as theirs. A court case followed, and Pennsylvania's Court of Admiralty determined that Olmsted was not in full control of the active when the privateer found the ship. Therefore, the court split the prize four ways. Olmsted appealed to the Continental Congress, who ruled in his favor, but Pennsylvania resisted and ignored Congress's ruling. Pennsylvania took the portion of the money they thought belonged to Olmsted and ordered the state treasurer, David Rittenhouse, to hold it in bond. Rittenhouse died in 1796 before the case was resolved and the bond was inherited by his daughters. In 1803, a federal judge ordered Pennsylvania to give the money to Olmsted and the state refused. In 1809, the U.S. Supreme Court ordered the federal court in Pennsylvania to enforce the 1803 decision. Federal marshals were sent to collect the prize money from the Rittenhouse's daughters or Rittenhouse's daughters, and were twice met by armed members of the Pennsylvania State Militia who prevented the enforcement of the Supreme Court's ruling. The governor of Pennsylvania appealed to who? <clears throat> President James Madison, hoping that the author of the Virginia's resolutions would side with state power. Madison responded that he was bound by the Constitution to side with the Supreme Court. And... That is another topic for another day. Meanwhile, the federal marshal somehow got around the militia and arrested one of the Rittenhouse daughters. Another court case emerged. A portion of the new court case explored the role of the armed state militia resisting the federal government. After all, Pennsylvania exercised vetoed power over the federal government via the gun. Pennsylvania defended herself in part, arguing the constitutional right of armed resistance by the states. The U.S. attorney, and therefore James Madison, responded that violence against the U.S. government was the same as rebellion and revolution. There was no constitutional right to armed resistance. The jury agreed with Madison and his U.S. attorney. The case meant that Madison's government did not believe in the right to armed resistance, and therefore the Second Amendment was not about states being armed to fight off a tyrannical government and it's not it's about having a militia to come to the defense of the state that everyone should be armed which i have no problem with being armed to come to the defense of your community if someone's doing wrong to your community like taxing it but <clears throat> i have and i have no problem with um 
<clears throat> with you know communities coming together and having some kind of agreement for a defense compact but madison he did not share that belief he believed that the government the federal government should not be rebelled against and that people should defend that government so we see that in these two cases here that James Madison, one of the principal architects of the Constitution as far as, as the amendments go, and of course we've covered how amendment is an addition to a document, and as easily as a document can have something added to it, it can be taken away by the power that added it to it. So the judges, legislature, president, king, whatever you want to call them, they can take that away from you. Um, so anyway, you, you have no rights except what the government grants you when you say that a, a government is your master, your ruler. Um, so anyway, uh, he was an architect of the constitution, helped write the second amendment. And he, um, he argued that state governments have the right to control guns outside of military use. And the state right doesn't ha the states do not have rights uh, to uh, armed resistance against federal authority. So there you have it. I mean, Madison would be going along with the Virginia legislatures this week. So let's educate ourselves before we make statements and think that the framers, who people erroneously call the founding fathers, but these framers would be on the side of liberty or freedom. They weren't. That's why they established a central government to control your ass and to protect their economic interest. They had no interest in your personal liberty. They had no interest in your personal freedom. They were looking out after themselves. If they weren't, we wouldn't have a government. So anyway, William Moore for Beyond the Ties That Bind. Until next time, have a great day.